We're glad to know you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, right now, we're looking at the real cost of Ghana Republic and Togo University certificates ban. Um, the thing is that uh, everybody's talking about this, and it seems as if there's going to be or there is some sort of stigma uh, attached to this. So whoever uh, schooled in Bene or Togo or any other country that has been affected is now being looked at as like, you know, is your certificate good or is it bad? Is your certificate authentic or is it not? And so all these uh, are constituting what may not be uh, very good for some people who are genuinely um, alumni or uh, still students in these countries. But let us hear firsthand from people who have, or someone who has uh, studied in one of these countries. We're talking to our guest this morning, who is Comrade Oladapo Marcos Orekelewa, National Organizing Secretary, ISFOP, uh, University Alumni. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. ISOP. It sounds I like one. FOP. FOP, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it stands for Institute Superior de Formation Professionnel. And in English, it's translated as Institute of Professional Studies. Uh, do you speak French? Yes, I speak a little bit of French. I understand a little bit of French. But you studied in there. a country that speaks French. Yes. Where is yes. this? Benin Republic? Yes, Benin Republic. Yeah. Okay, tell us what it is like. You know, now it's as if when you go to Benin to get an education, it is not an education. Mm. Well, I'm sure there are people who understand that. There mm -hmm. are others that really had an education, but we need to get it across. Yes. How is it like studying yes. in, those, uh, in that country? Um, you see, um, the... Studying in Benin Republic it gives, um, let me say, it gives youths, it gives students, it gives applicants, those who are aspiring to understand that studying outside of Nigeria has its own benefits, cultural benefits, social benefits, and a lot of benefits. Um, being an alumni of a school in Benin Republic has exposed my mindset and understanding that education is not just about read and writing. It's about understanding, it's about learning, it's about skills, it's about culture, it's diverse. But you could have had that in Nigeria and then NYSC mm. to, you know, diversify. You see, one thing that uh, many people don't understand is that I used to think studying outside Nigeria is stressful and is expensive mm. until when I met a friend of mine in 2013 and we spoke about schools in Ghana, schools in Benin Republic and what have you. So one thing about the vast understanding about learning and them understanding the cultural benefit of studying outside of Nigeria, especially which is Benin Republic, which is a case study we are talking about today, is that um, there, is, there is this um, misconception and there is this misunderstanding that people are putting out there that um, studying in Benin Republic is as a result of not having a quality um, um, degree certificate or be it PhD or be it any form of um, qualifications that they are about. Um, I'm, I'm a product of a school in Benin Republic, which is ISFOP, ISFOP. And um, I must tell you that at least those that we graduated together, it is clear to our eyes because once you are in a school and you know all these kind of things are going on and probably you are hearing stuff like this, especially when I come back to Nigeria and people will be like, are you sure that country which you're studying, the degree is accredited? It is accredited. I must say that there are lots of private universities in Benin Republic, but it depends on which one you are going to. So if you are going to a particular private university, you have to make your research. That shows that you, you are wise as a student, as an applicant who is aspiring for education outside of your country. You cannot just go to a country whereby you don't understand their cultural values, you don't understand their, their traveling policies, you don't even understand their curricula. Take for example, when I went to study, I wanted to study economics, but I have always loved to be a sociologist right from my secondary school days. So, but when I was trying to search and to, to check on the internet to solve, to look for which is the best school for me to attend in Benin Republic then, I, I stumbled upon East for Benin University and I found out that, okay, this is a vocational professional um, um, institution which I can learn and be a sociologist and they will teach me in English. Mm -hmm. And at that, by that virtue, I was able to, to like, okay, I went for it. And this as a result because of the fact that I have seen a product of that same school who is doing exploits. Yes, who is doing exploits. Speaking about cultural value, I think um, 
when I was planning my first visit to Benin Republic, I don't know how it feels like to be outside of Nigeria. I actually thought I'm going to book a flight, you know, stuff like that. But until when I got a very, very, very detailed explanation, I first of all got in contact with their uh, customer care line, which is on their website, and, you know, they spoke to me and told me that in order to gain admission, you know, you, you can come in with your WAEC and stuff like that. And many Nigerians, many youth... You don't need those, jam. No, you don't need all those stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I think once it is not hard, we always feel like it is, it is, it is too easy. We feel like writing the quality jam, is not good. Exactly, the quality is not good. But I must tell you that passing WAEC is much more difficult than passing jam. It is very, very, it is very, very clear. Passing WAEC is much more difficult than passing jam. So you are a kind of person that you made your six credit in your WAEC and you're going through jam, you're going through post jam. I can recollect my first jam. I had, I think, 222, and the course which I wanted to study requires 250. It has, it has to take me another 365 days again to apply for that same jam. And when I did that first year, second year, third year, I felt like, no, this is actually wasting my time. I have other things to catch up with. And once you are this kind of person that you, you have goals, you, you need to achieve some things in life, you have to look for other ways. And I must tell you that studying in Benin Republic is not cheap. It's not cheap mentally, it's not cheap financially, because you, you have to do a lot of research, you have to be sure. And that is the kind of research I'm talking about is, it shows that you, you are foresee the future. Because you know definitely Nigeria is a giant of Africa. So even if you are coming from any part of the world to come to Nigeria, back in the days, 10, 15, 20 years ago, we have whites who are coming to Nigeria to study in likes of Unilag, Uniben, and even UI. But now, I don't think we have more of that again. We now have Nigerians going outside more and which we, we can see the Jaqpa syndrome and okay. all this stuff. Let's yeah. not be like we're evangelists of Jaqpa now, that <laughs> we're calling on people to go to Benin Republic yeah, and all that. But, okay. you know, I needed to know what it okay. is like, you know, studying in that country. One of the questions I was going to ask you okay. was, uh, how do you surmount the, uh, the challenges of language, mm. culture, but, yeah. but you've mentioned mm. uh, those things. Perhaps that is something that Nigeria should borrow, because... They can drive traffic to their country, even though they are not Anglophone. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are we speak English, and mm -hmm. we don't have French students coming mm -hmm. to our country. So maybe this is what we should explore. But yeah. now that this thing has come out, yeah. I'm just trying to get into your mind as an alumni yeah. of a school in Benin Republic. Yeah. How has it affected you as a person and others that you might know that came from the same uh, background? Mm, let me say that. Um Speaking on um, the, the saga which is going on, especially the suspension that um, um, His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tunubu just slams on Togo and Benin Republic School, I must say that even when I heard the news, I thought it was a rumor because I knew, I think I first heard something like this in 2020. That was, I think, pre-COVID era. And um, a lot has been going on in the background. See, the in a kind of setting, in the educational system, whereby we can't really say that Nigeria is doing 100% good in the education sector, we can't say that. But in as much we, we want to sensitize the system, in as much we want to make sure that um, the Nigeria is top-notch in terms of um, global recognition in the educational sector, we should also be careful in not um, affecting a lot of people, generalizing a particular thing and making it affect those that are out of the game. Why I'm saying this is because when I heard the news first, I think it came to me as a shock. I thought it was a rumor and it kept on going and I found out that, okay, I'm, I'm a news inclined person, so I watch news almost every day on different channels. So I found out that, okay, this is true. So a lot of things have been going on. The, the associations of, um, of um, management in Benin Republic and the students association, the alumni, everybody were reaching out to themselves and what is this, what is really going on? And once something like this happens, it begins to go from bodies to bodies to bodies. The DSS is involved, the National Youth Service Corps is involved, NUC, National University Commission is involved, and many other bodies are involved. And I like this sensitization, I must be frank. I'm, I cannot say Nigeria should be a dumping ground of, um, of illegalities or of dollars or people who are not capable of, um, of um, holding a particular position or going to get a degree within six weeks and four months. In fact, I was laughing when I saw that and I was like, how possible is that? Even your registration time, it takes you more than, 
more than at least if if you're fast it takes you like two three months your registration and there, there is a particular time you, you can make some fees and one thing about Bene school is that this thing has actually it the the kind of system of the education is driving most of nigerians to that country because we know that your three years is going to be your three years your two years course study of direct entry as a direct entry is going to be two years i'm not saying all courses in Benin republic are three years some are four years like some engineering courses and um, some uh, uh, medical courses are, are four years. But your three years is going to be three years. You've been in a country whereby you're trying to study, trying to get a goal. I was speaking about goal earlier. And you're being affected by strike upon strike upon strike. And you're spending money. Some people will come back to school and it is like they're forgotten what they studied in the previous semester. So it's kind of traumatizing. So when the generalization came up, I feel like, this investigation, to me, should have been done first because I think I heard in the news yesterday that the president has inaugurated a, a committee which should look at this um, this um, whole thing. And I felt like, well, yeah, that's a good move. I would have felt like that committee should have been set up, should have done um, um, all these rudiments of um, background checks and accreditations and all that stuff before the suspension. The reason is because the suspension is, is too sudden, it's too direct. There's a bilateral relationship between Nigeria and Benin Republic that definitely we know that Benin Republic um, depends on Nigeria in some aspects. In, in terms of, in terms of um, um, workforce, in terms of even this education. And I must tell you that Benin Republic is not only a beneficiary. Nigeria is a country of over 200 million people. So definitely we have how many youths People are aspiring to get, and mind you, Benin Republic is not, is not a country whereby you are being limited by your age to study. It's run like almost like the National Open University of Nigeria. So you can join at any given semester at any time. In as much you are steadfast, in as much you know what you came in for, and you, you are able to, to achieve it. I must tell you, a three years program might not even take more than two years and some months. In as much you are steadfast and you know what you are doing in the school. So there are many of us who are alumni of um, Benin Republic, who went through the four walls of school, who study, who burn our candles. It's a, it's a country with 24 hours electricity, but yet we make sure that we know where we are coming from and where we are going to. We are not stopping at Benin. Most of us are schooled in Benin, came back to Nigeria, did our masters. I'm a living example. Did your masters and some has even traveled abroad. So my problem is just in quotes, the generalization saying that the Benin school, Togo school, I don't know anything about Togo, I've not been there before actually, but Benin Republic as a case study, I must tell you that even if there are illegalities going on, it is paramount and it is of necessity that the government should take its measures, there's no problem about that, but generalizing a particular thing. I can give, um, I can give instances of, of something as, uh, as, as compared to what is going on now, which has happened to Nigerian universities. But I would not like to call names, because it looks like as if I am, I am trying to bring down students yeah, who graduated But did you have university. any wind of uh, this kind of thing ever happening in Benin while you were there? None. None. So this None. took you as a surprise? It took me as a surprise. It took me as a shock. It is not, to me, I felt like it's not something that we should be welcoming a new year with. This... Um, this um, committee which he has set up to do the old um, um, check-ins and everything should should be the first thing he should do. To me, I feel like, no, I, I don't understand that like, you're just slamming the suspension by a journalist who did uh, a findings on the 28th of December, if I could remember, and the suspension is given on the, on the 2nd of January 2024. Within how many days? No. There, there should be, there should be um, a, a background check. There should be uh, okay, checking out is, is the, the case study of making sure to know that, okay, what this journalist has said or what this guy has said as concerning Benin universities or Togo universities at large. Is it true? Is it sure? There are hundreds are of the universities. people involved? And all that. Yes, exactly. Who are the people involved? A, a, a stone to one should, shouldn't be like as if you're stoning the whole private universities in Benin. And I must tell you that it is... It is, it is it is so disheartening because it has caused a case of pandemonium all over the alumni and um, associations and group of Nigerian graduates who graduated from Benin Republic who are presently in Nigeria and they are like, what's all this? Like, why, why, is it going, why is it supposed to be like this? If the country were to be better, 
educational wise we won't disturb ourselves to go to Benin Republic I must tell you because that is just a fact you do your work you do your jam you do your post jam repeatedly two three four five years and you see that you can gain admission in a school whereby with your wife and you will get a very good degree. You come back, which is accredited by NUC and other bodies in Nigeria. Why not you take the shot? Mm. But you did say that, um, mind you, this is not encouraging you to run away from Nigeria. <laughs> but you did say that it's not cheap to uh, school no, no, it's um, not. in Bene Republic, it's for not. instance. It's so uh, it's, it's easier to school in Nigeria? Apart from, the, 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 apart school, from the, the strikes and all that. You know, in my... The school in, you went to was a yeah, private institute. It was a private university. So compare that to Nigerian schools. Oh, no, 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 no. Comparing it to Nigeria, you see, one thing about Nigerian private university is that it is they charge their, should I say, their applicants or their student based on what they consume because <laughs> definitely it is run by the school. It is financed by the school, so... It, is, it, it can be very expensive. But I must tell you that only those that don't know that, <laughs> even the accommodation in Benin Republic alone is, is more than some school fees in Nigeria, the accommodation. So I was laughing when they say somebody gets a degree for, I think, say 50,000, 100,000. There are rumors everywhere. We need to understand the media. I understand the media to a large extent, and I know that it is not everything that is said on the media that is actually true, except you make your findings. Yeah, but he got a certificate, and he got accepted into NYSC and all those. Those are the things the then parameters... the NYSC system should be questioned because a guy who served in 2018 came back and served in 2022. What is wrong with the NYSC database? What happened to the authentication? So we all thought that since we served... So those that served in maybe 10 years ago can equally say that, okay, I think I like the polo now. I can go back to the NYC company we served. So even if we are checking the from is, the... is higher now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't so really understand you can that. Uh, if, if, you, if you serve before, you're serving again, then the system should be questioned as well. We are only looking at the... the, the we are only looking at Benin Republic. Benin Republic. No. Okay, no, now, now um, we, we know... We know that there are people who mm. genuinely went to school in Benin Republic. Yes, they definitely. have a certificate. They studied hard definitely. and all that. We know that. Definitely. We know that. But the fact that this happened mm. and they checked the database and everything, it, it checked out. It means that there are some people also who could want to have an education genuinely yes. in Benin Republic yes. and they end up being scammed. Mm. Maybe by our own Nigerian brothers, because mm. whoever did that must have links with Nigeria as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. maybe by our own Nigerian brothers. Mm -hmm. So what is the proper way to go in case you want to go to Benin Republic mm. or Togo? We don't know anything about Togo, but mm. let's use Benin Republic. In case you want to go to school in Benin Republic, yes. what channels are you likely to pass through mm. so that we get to know that this is the right channel? Mm -hmm. You don't get scammed. You're mm -hmm. not getting a certificate that mm -hmm. is just a forgery of some sort. Um, I think this is a very great point which you've raised here. And for the viewers who are watching, I think it is very important that there is no organization established that does not have, number one, a website. Their media should be up to date. So even those that leave Nigeria and study in the likes of UK and Canada, they did their research online and um, they, made, they made contact with the school, emails, calls. So if you want to go and study in a school and somebody is claiming to be an agent, in your own country, and you've not even seen the school, you've not even met a staff of the school, you've not even met somebody who graduated from the school, like myself. I've met somebody who graduated from the school, who is using his certificate, who have served, who is articulately sound, not just about the container. Now we talk about the content. If I speak to you in five minutes, I know that, okay, truly you went to school. So that is what I did. And after that, I went myself to Benin Republic. Benin Republic, you don't have to take flights. You just pass through Badagri, you're in Benin Republic. It's, it's a stone throw from Lagos here. Yeah. So you go there, you go to the school, the location itself. You observe it yourself. You look at when they started and where they are heading to and where they are. My school was established in 1999. So you look at all these things. You meet, you go to the admission. I'm sure all schools have the admission board. Uh, you go there, you know, you, you understand the admission process. And if you're far, maybe staying in the far north or in the east or something, why not? All these schools have websites. In fact, if you go to Google now and just type it, um, school accredited by NUC or that is accredited by Nigerian government, 
in Benin Republic and click search. It's going to bring a list of them. And once you are clicking on any of them, it's going to be directing you to your website. So I think with that, you shouldn't be able to fall victim of. I think it's because of the fact that some people are just selfish and don't want to, that they, they, they don't want to acquire education in the proper way. That is why I say that what His Excellency President Bola Etinubu is doing is, is, is good. It's good. It's very, very good sensitizing the educational sector of Nigeria. It's good. But in that same vein, there are a lot of people who want to take through the shortcut of life to acquire what somebody did with, with, with sweat. So that is why I recommended that and I applaud what the president is doing. But in that same vein, some people will just hear that uh, uh, school, you can acquire this, you know, you don't even need to come. Oh, okay, maybe probably this thing, uh, you can. They do that even in passport office. They do that in any, anywhere, any organization. That is when you, yourself, you are not, you, you don't know what you are looking for. You, that, you can easily be scammed. And because of the fact that you, you, you uh, in Yoruba language, we call it ujukokuru. Because of the fact that you, you just want to attain something that it is not rightfully meant for you just by cutting corners. And because it is cheap. And that is why you see it's all these agents will not tell you. Cutting corners or longer <laughs> throats. <laughs> that is why all these people won't tell you okay. that uh, uh, bring uh, one million or two million. Because they know that you say, ah, it's too expensive. So they will call a very cheap amount of money. You are acquiring a degree and somebody is saying that you should come and buy a degree. What happened to the skill? What happened if you if you are employed with that with that course? What will you delete? What will you do? You get a degree, come back and do politics. Ah, that is in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, because, we are. That is in Nigeria yes, we are. because so you don't really surprised. need a degree in politics the way I see it I, I, in Nigeria I, 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 today. I'm surprised. I'm but surprised. you you know, my fear was that mm -hmm. uh, after this pronouncement, maybe. Uh, in your workplace, for yeah. instance, somebody yeah. is saying, I heard you're from uh, Benin Republic, you mm -hmm. got your certificate there, let's, mm -hmm. let's scrutinize you more and all mm -hmm. that. But has it affected you like ah, that? It is welcome. I'm all, <laughs> those kind of things, does not, I know of those that, um, oh, I know that, no. If a challenge like that comes or if a scrutiny like that comes up at any given time, if they are tap at, if you wake them up, they are ready. It is, there is no problem in scrutinizing. And I must tell you, sir, that... Even before we acquire our NYC certificate, we wrote exams at the NYC um, headquarter in Jabi in Abuja. We wrote exams. Like, they will ask you questions about your school, where it is located, what you learned, uh, uh, about yourself, what was your, um, the, the travel processes, stuff like that. They ask questions. And those who were not able to convince them, they didn't get their certificates. Yes. Exams. Yeah, well, um, sometimes I ask myself what mm. really is in a paper called certificate because we've seen we've seen people right. graduate that don't have certificates. Some yes. are dropouts. Some are you know exactly. never went to school. Like we hear mm. there was a story in one of the African countries where someone who didn't graduate from a law school mm. was uh, posing as a lawyer for whether twelve years or more, mm -hmm. and he never lost one case <laughs> of all the that. cases you that he had. He that. never lost one. It reminds me of a movie mm. that I watched the other time. Mm. Catch me if you can. Mm. You know, he had to learn everything within a space of weeks and then he got the knowledge that he needed to do whatever. Or you're talking about Suits, a movie <laughs> as well. Mm. The person who was a professional did not have the um, knowledge as much as the pe person who did not even go to the lens that the other people went to. Mm. But this is all we're talking about. Yeah. Benin Republic has been blacklisted as it is. Um, you are recommending that the investigation by the committee should have been done earlier before suspended. slamming whatever uh, penalty it was on the, on, the, on the schools and all that. Mm. But what else would you recommend that be done to make sure that people like you don't have a bad name uh, that other people uh, that cut corners uh, might have? Uh, that is where the committee should... Um the committee have their duty, and I think I read through their article this morning, even before I came to the studio, that um, in order to be able to cop this and not to generalize the fact that um, a person is sabotaging the effort of students, of alumni, of graduates who went to Benin Republic, who did all rigorous activities to obtain their degree, I think it is very important that um, after which this scrutiny has been done by all the private investors in Benin Republic, they should also make sure that they sensitize this country as well. They should make sure that the educational sector of Nigeria is also better, better off, and should look into the likes of writing four, three exams before gaining admission. 
In my secondary school days, I remember a guy who, who we studied together. We, we did all our, he was in, I think he was in commercial class, I was in art class then. And he was a Ghanaian, he was just around, I think his mom was married to a Nigerian. And long story short, he traveled back to his country while I was still battling with jams and post jams. He was already in his second year. So in as much as we want to sensitize the quality of the degree and those who are working in the Nigerian sector, which I don't know if the jobs is even available, but let's just be positive. We should also make sure that Nigeria educational sector is scrutinized well. There should not be favoritism because favoritism is one of the biggest problem we face in Nigeria. I'll give you an example. You are supposed to be admitted to a school who needs you to score 60 in the post jam. You score 59, you were not given admission. And somebody who scores 45 was given admission. Why? Why is that? So all these are big problems. I can go on and on and on and on. Um, just like you rightly said, it is not about the container. It is about the content. I can see many people are just glamouring on, OK, this is it because Benin Republic is at the backyard of Lagos. If this kind of thing happened in schools like maybe Canada or UK, are we trying to say that people don't buy certificates in those countries? Are we trying to say that in Nigeria they don't buy certificates? I'm not saying buying certificates is a good thing. In fact, it should, it should be penalized. It should have, it should have a, a, very, a very big um, 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 penalty. thing. The penalty, yes, thank you. Penalty to that. But I'm just saying that if, in as much we are looking at one angle, we should make sure we cut across every angle. If we're sensitizing those who are coming from the Republic to Nigeria, we should also sensitize our own country and make sure that our educational sector is good. And the likes of WIAC, JAM, PUSH JAM, I'm not saying it's bad to write those three exams, but I must tell you that writing exams does not, does, it is not a yardstick to show that a person is brilliant. I must tell you. It is when you So left for you, JAM yeah. will be scrapped. I'm not saying jam to be scrapped. It's a whole body, so I'm not going to let that come out of my mouth. But at well, the you're same thinking time, it. <laughs> I'm, at the same time, you're I'm just thinking. thinking. It. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah. If I, if I'm, if I'm put in a position whereby I can make some adjustments as regards the educational system of Nigeria in the area of gaining admission and other stuff, I will, I will, I will take WIAC very, very, very serious than any other exam because people joke with WIAC and take their post jam and jam serious. I'm telling you, your jam and post jam will end in the university you, you are studying, as far as Nigeria is concerned. But WIAC will take you West Africa. That is why it's called the West Africa Examination Council. So you can use WIAC even to gain admission abroad in Europe. I, 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 I see a problem. Why do we have jam when we still have uh, the internal exams that the schools give you still and all gives that? You, um, yes. I don't know why that came up, it, but it, fortunately, it's generating a lot of money for Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's all about so, the money. It's all so about the money. Sometimes you just look at it mm. and you say, could it be the reason they are doing this and all that? But mm. has it had any psychological effect on you or anybody that you know that uh, studied in Benin, this uh, slamming of a ban on Benin yes. and Togo? Yes, especially, How bad has that been? especially those who recently graduated. For those of us who have graduated for a very long time, we, we, we are confident. We know where we left. You know, the fact that you left a place and you've, you've not been there for many years doesn't mean that the same way you leave it is, is how it is. So those that are much more affected are those that recently graduated because they feel like they're about going into the favor market. I won't call it the labor market. And this kind of thing is how they, after spending a lot of time, they study their books and they will land in their own country and their certificate will not be recognized. Whereas while they study from their 100 to 200 to 300 level, their school was recognized. So what do they do? It's traumatizing. How about the parents that spend a whole lot of money, millions, on their child to go and study in Benin? So when they come back and they say that oh, your school is not going to work, didn't you make your research before? Didn't you check well? So no one knows tomorrow. You can't predict the future. But in as much you went to a school, while you were there, it was accredited. While you studied, it was good. And this kind of this kind of news is all over the place. I must tell you, there is one thing Nigeria knows how to do best, is carrying rumors. That is what we know how to do best. And once the rumors is everywhere, you begin to see organization be checking, ah, they will, not have, they, they, they will not be concerned more on your person. They will not be concerned about what you have upstairs. They will be concerned about the paper which you are holding. 
They said, okay, can I see yours? Once they see Institute, they say, is a French or Benin Republic, or can you step aside? And you see, that can be traumatizing because it can cause a lot of people to do it. You know, I, I think you understand best where I'm going to. So it is very, very, in, it is very, very important that they, they take a look at when you want to make an announcement, you should not, you should not do it too sudden. There should be a background check, like, it has to, be, it has to gradually come up. And you, when you want to give your statement, you now say, okay, following our rigorous um, checks and all this, we find out that this and this and this. Not that you head in, in, the, in four days' time and there is a suspension on the old country. It's kind of traumatizing. And I've heard a lot of people who sent me a message. In fact, immediately the news broke out. As the national organizing secretary of my school, I got a lot of messages. I get messages in a day at least an average of 20 from people who just graduated, who we graduated together, who, you know. What do we think about this thing? What, what's the president doing? We don't understand. This thing is going to, it's going to cost us our jobs. People will be looking at us down. I say, see, it is all about you. If you are relevant to your place of work, if you are relevant to your job, they know you. I must tell you that even if they will scrutinize you, they will say, no, this person has been with us for five, six, six, ten years, and <laughs> we don't see any reason why we should take his paper important than his person. Yeah, um, but when, yeah. when, when you, ha you are unfortunate that village people followed you, <laughs> followed you to your workplace, they can use that against you. I, I, yes, yeah. I, quite, I quite agree with the trauma yeah. you're talking about, yeah. yes. uh, the fact that uh, a lot of people might get affected because mm. of that pronouncement. We've been saying it on this show mm. all the time mm. that when public officials want to say something, they mm. should scrutinize it and see the effect it will have. Thank you. It's just like fuel subsidy gone till today. Til today we are still suffering, still that, suffering that sentence and all that. So we've seen these things happen time mm -hmm. and time again. Mm -hmm. But we are here where we are now. Mm. There's, there's no taking back the word, words that, that have been spoken mm. already. Mm. I'd like you now to talk to your alumni, to talk to your fellow uh, students that may have studied in Bene or are still studying or mm. just graduated from Bene Republic. Just address them and give some words of encouragement as we wrap up. Okay, um, my encouragement would be that just be who you are, you, you know what you are made of, you, you've acquired your degree in a very, in a very um, simple and a very, very good manner, so don't be downcast, don't feel, don't feel, um, don't feel bad, make sure we are going to stand throughout these um, tough times and we'll make sure that by God's grace we will come out of this and those who are trying to sabotage the universities in Benet, the corporate, those who are trying to, to sell certificates will be held responsible for their, for their sins and not the general public. So I urge every um, um, graduate of um, any Benin universities, if you are still studying, be steadfast, continue to study and um, with God by your side, you come out victorious. Thank yeah, you. I use this time to urge you, the alumni, uh, yeah. people who know their onions and know what they passed through to get what mm. they got, mm. uh, to also do your own findings. Find mm. out this syndicate yeah. that because it's a syndicate that sure, does sure. this. Find out this syndicate helped yeah. in the investigation that mm -hmm. the government is doing mm -hmm. right now, so that mm -hmm. these people will be fished out, mm -hmm. named and shamed, mm -hmm. uh, because that also will vindicate you and everybody who is studying or who yes. has studied yes. in Benin Republic. We'd like yes. to thank you, comrade, for coming thank on the show this morning. Pleasure. It was really good having to uh, talk with you. Thank and you very much. thank you for keeping to time. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I remember when you got to the studio. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with comrade Oladakpo Marcos Orekelewa, a national organizing secretary, um, ISFOB, University alumni. Uh, he was talking to us here about the real cost of uh, Benin Republic and Togo University certificates ban. The implication on the people, the implication on the economy, the implication on everybody. And one of the recommendations was find out what really happened and what really happens before you slam a ban on an entire country or two countries at the same time without, before you, you, because if you slam that ban on everybody and everything, it means that uh, uh, a lot of things might go wrong. So find out the real thing, be sure of your investigation before you take the necessary steps to punish whoever is the culprit. We do hope that um, this kind of a thing will not linger for too long 
and we do hope that it will not spoil the relationship between Nigeria and Bene and Togo uh, as countries as well. They are all West African countries yes, and yes. we should continue to be brothers uh, as it is. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, this is where we wrap it up on the show this morning. It's been a pleasure being with you and we hope that we will uh, return tomorrow for the breakfast again on Thursday. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Have a wonderful day.